supposed to do to actually get some data that would allow me to figure out the formula for magnesium oxide. I want to do the reaction just like I did before, only allow the magnesium to react with the air inside this porcelain crucible. By keeping everything that happens inside the crucible and weighing the product after I weigh the original piece of metal, which I have in my hand, I'll be able to figure out how much oxygen was absorbed into the magnesium compound and from that information figure out the full formula for magnesium oxide. So let's begin the experiment of burning the magnesium inside the crucible with it covered. So this is a crucible cover. It goes on here like this with the metal inside. This is a uh, top-loading digital uh, balance. We turn it on by pushing down on the front bar, at least this model, this is the way you do it. You wait a few seconds and it should come up to read 0, 0.00 grams. This is a centigram balance, so the uh, last digit that it shows is in the hundredth of a gram um, unit and it, therefore they, they, we call this a centigram balance. Alright, so if we put something on the balance of course the, the display will change. So the first thing I'm going to need to weigh is the crucible and its lid together because I'm going to ex be weighing both of these things together throughout the experiment. So the lid and the crucible 34.57 grams according to the display. It changes a little bit. I'm leaning on the table. That'll have an impact on this. So will the air currents in the room. Now those things will change the balance. So at this point it says 34.57. That's what I'll write on the blackboard for the weight of the empty crucible. The next thing I need to do is weigh my piece of magnesium inside the crucible. I'm going to put this magnesium metal ribbon, I'll coil it up so that it fits into the bottom of the crucible. I want to get it as hot as I can, so of course it being on the bottom would be best if I'm going to try to heat it with a Bunsen burner. So you have to twist it around a little bit to get it to stay in the bottom of the crucible. Pretty good. And let's weigh it again. Notice that I'm not handling the crucible too many times because actually the oils from my fingers will change the weight of an object. And as I do the experiment I want to practice with these uh, tongs these are called crucible tongs and they're specially made to actually handle crucibles and their lids because these things are usually very hot when you go to remove them from one place to another. Alright, the new weight is 34.79 grams and that's a change due to the addition of magnesium metal. Remember I put magnesium metal in there. I'll show you the metal. There it is, in the bottom of the crucible. All right, so putting everything back together again. This is the way you pick up a crucible with crucible tongs. You gently squeeze it not too hard, otherwise it'll squeeze out and I would place it into the wire triangle that allows it to be held above the Bunsen burner. So I'm ready now to start heating the crucible.
I want to get the crucible to glow bright orange on the bottom. It's got to be really hot to do the same uh, thing that I did with the piece of magnesium out here in the room. So it's got to be very, very hot on the bottom. All right, so now we are uh, getting the uh, crucible and its contents really, really hot. I'm moving the Bunsen burner around with my hand. I'm holding it in my hand so that I can control where the flame is. The hottest part of a Bunsen burner flame is just at the very top of that inner blue cone. So that's the way to get the crucible really, really hot. And that's what I need to make sure that re the magnesium reaches the full temperature. So I don't just leave it on the table. And you should be able to see that the crucible bottom is glowing bright orange. And so is the wire that's uh, holding it. Alright, now I want to uh, let a little bit more air into this reaction because I know that it's a closed lid and there might not be enough air, enough oxygen to react all the magnesium. So I'm just going to lift the lid just very quickly. I don't want to let any of the uh, smoke or oxide escape the crucible if I can help it, but I've got to crack the lid a little bit. And I think you might even see a little puff of smoke come out of this. And that's um, something I don't want to do, unavoidable really, but uh, you have to keep air in there, so you, there's sort of a compromise between making sure there's enough air and losing a little bit of the product. So that smoke was actually some magnesium oxide that escaped. But it's reacting in there, that's a good sign. We'll heat it some more. After repeated weighings of the crucible, after heating it, opening it up, weighing it, after it cooled, heating it again, letting it cool, weighing it again, I reach the point where the weight is no longer changing and you can see that our weight of the crucible plus the contents, which are now magnesium oxide, is 34.94. So that's what I'm going to write on the board as the last piece of data that we need for this experiment. The idea now is that we now know what the crucible plus the magnesium oxide weighs. We knew what the crucible weighed with just the magnesium in it. If we took the difference between these two weighings, we would be weighing the amount of oxygen. Whoops. And you could calculate that. Subtracting the weight of the empty crucible from the weight of the crucible and the magnesium would give you the weight of the magnesium itself. If you know both elements' weights and you calculate the moles of each one, you should be able to determine the formula for magnesium oxide. Remember that because you don't have the molecular weight of this formula, you would just be figuring out the so-called empirical formula for magnesium oxide. But you should be able to do that from our data. You should go ahead and do it and see what you get.